Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain. Konami learned something. Okay, so in the previous Konami learned something video that I put out, I think in 2022, was I talked about, you know, the neg negation, how Konami since 2020, 2020 has stopped printing negate cards and the negate cards that they are printing are having balance. That's really convenient. They're not just um, negation for the sake of negation. They're actually balanced. And I also talked about as well, the other thing that they've learned is that they are putting in more interesting archetypes and, the ban and they've also removed every card in the game that says neither player can activate cards in response to this activation. Meaning that cards that just deny play all of them are banned and we are seeing in the near future to banning hot red king calamity as this card in the ocg is banned but we can see in the near future of calamity being banned so we're seeing a lot of process and a lot of things taking place for Yu-Gi-Oh becoming a better game but as you know with konami we are still a long way off for Yu-Gi-Oh to be a better game we still have a lot of problems so let's see the next stage or step that Konami is taking to address some of the issues that Yu-Gi-Oh has at this current point in time. One, dealing with secondary market. Two, challenging TCG status quo. One, dealing with the secondary market. Indeed, with last year and the pre and the premiere of Rarity Collection, this was a whole new game changer that Konami introduced in the TCG. For the first time in Yu-Gi-Oh history, in TCG anyway, the meta staple cards were affordable and still are for 2023. It is amazing. And so we already saw a price, a price reduction for a lot of meta staples that were just affordable. Triple Tactics talents became affordable. Baron de Fleur became affordable. So many, uh, whether it was imp Infinite Impermanence, Forbidden Droplet, cards such as these just became readily av available and accessible and before were not accessible before. So we're, we've seen a massive uh, price drop of just um, meta staples. And indeed, we're seeing the same thing happen this year as as Konami has beaten my expectations, as I expected Rarity Collection 2 to come out this year, but in November, the same time as last year. But not only is Konami going hard and fast, we're gonna, we are seeing and we have a confirmed uh, uh, date now that Rarity Collection 2 is going to come out in May of this year, not in November. And we have confirmed cards such as Appaloosa, Access Code Talker, Droll and Lockbird, and these are the cards that we know that are confirmed to be in this set. We also have IP Mascarena. So I'm telling you, Rarity Collection 2 is looking to be bigger, better, and more dangerous than Rarity Collection 1. So indeed, the secondary market in Yu-Gi-Oh! is being hit, and it's being hit really, really hard. The, the time for absurd prices in Yu-Gi-Oh! is now coming to an end. And Konami has begun to realize that Yu-Gi-Oh! should not be costing silly prices anymore. So it's, I'm glad to see, as they say better later than never, that Konami is addressing the price issue that Yu-Gi-Oh! has had for a very long time. So it's good to see that's being addressed at, at this point in time as we speak. Let's move on to the next point. 2. Challenging the TCG status quo. Indeed, this is something that Konami is doing as we speak right now. Since our last ban list from all that was in the summertime, was it in the summertime, I believe? Or near December time there last year that banned, I think summertime of 2023 that banned uh, Kostira, Arise Heart. We've seen a competitive scene in the TCG that has had 16 deck 
meta scene. This is something that historic and that has never happened before in TCG history. Usually the best, de usually our meta scene or competitive scene always has like two to th three decks maximum that are the best decks. But now you have, we have a choice of 16 decks and this has remained the same. Why is this challenging the status quo? Because essentially what Konami has basically done and said right now is that a lot of players have been saying that competitive Yu-Gi-Oh is expensive and it's hard to get into. Well, Konami is now saying that bullshit, I don't want to hear you say that anymore. Look at the, and they're saying, look at the competitive scene right now. You can play all these decks. Your uh, meta staples are now affordable. So I don't want to hear that excuse. I don't want to hear excuses. And they're even further saying is that, look, we're going to release all the other meta staples that you need in May of this year. Okay. If you need them, they're going to be released to you and they're going to be given to you all or for a cheap price. And you can enter the competitive scene at your leisure. I mean, for crying out loud, Konami is saying is that, you know, Manadium, which is which which everyone knows is the best combo deck right now. It's going to be available to you in May of this year, and you're going to be able to play it for cheap. Everyone will be able to play Manadium. The point being is that if there's a uh, if there's a competitive combo deck right now that you cannot afford, Konami is saying that, you know what, screw it, screw you. I'll make sure it's affordable. So right now, essentially, Konami is saying that I don't want to hear excuses from any of the player base. I don't want to hear nothing. I want you to shut up and play the game and stop complaining. And indeed, that is the case. Konami is really putting their foot down and really challenging the TCG status quo. That the competitive scene is um, stagnant and that you can only play two to three decks? I don't think so. That Yu-Gi-Oh! is as prices out of control? I don't think so. Um, even now, I can honestly say Yu-Gi-Oh! is cheap. You don't, you don't have to play the fire decks. You have so many choices of decks that you can play in the competitive scene. I mean, for crying out loud, Telements won uh, recently in TCG the, what is it, in I think one of the latest tournaments? You know, in YCSs, I think it won recently in this in just early this month, and the best decks were heralded to be the fire decks. So to say that the fire decks are the best deck and yet something else won, um, you know, uh, uh, regionals, you know, it's complete and utter fallacy. True, we did have another regionals that rescue ace, fire, you rescue ace, fire king did win. But the point being is that essentially the TCG meta scene has been proven that anything can really top as long as the player is good enough. You don't have to get the best cards. This is the case. And Konami is really combating this and really saying that, do you know what? We've had enough. We are taking steps now to change the game. We're taking steps to make sure Yu-Gi-Oh! is affordable and we would like you to actually stop complaining and actually see what we're doing for the game. Conclusion. So, what do I make of all of this? Well, I say, as I've said before, Yu-Gi-Oh! has a long way to go before it gets to the ideal place. And I believe Konami is taking the appropriate steps to do so. It's now up to us as players to realize that we don't have to pay silly prices for the best deck. We have a choice. And it's time we take those choices that we have been given this year. Because every other year we never had a choice in our competitive scene. Our choices, we were forced to pay for the expensive decks. And whether we wanted to or not, we had no choice because the meta staples were very expensive. The meta decks were also very expensive. So we had no choice. Any casual player that wanted to play competitively had to fork out a lot of money for meta staples, even if they didn't, uh, even if they didn't want to play the competitive deck. They had to still fork out a lot for the uh, competitive staples. But now that is not no longer the case. You don't have to pay. You don't really have to pay a lot 
for the competitive uh, staples right now. The competitive staples as we have right now are very, very cheap and are extremely affordable. And other competitive staples, if they're if they're not available and expensive, will be made affordable. Um, a Palooza is sitting now at forty pounds, but you bet your ass is that when it gets re, re when it gets printed in rarity collection, it's gonna drop to six or maybe even four pounds as it'll be in every single rarity and every single right now competitive meta staple card right that you need in Yu-Gi-Oh is going to be in rarity collection the exceptions are going to be sp little knight which you will have to pay for possibly i think uh the the sinful spoil package and horus but I think, yeah, and Horus, I believe. But I think cards like Chaos Angel, I think, will be accessible to you. So it's going to be huge. And so, essentially, Konami really is doing a really gargantuan effort here to make Yu-Gi-Oh! affordable for the casual players and trying to break the divide between casual and competitive players. The divide is being broken as we speak right now, as competitive is is slowly starting to look affordable and slowly not starting to look like it's going to break your, uh, your piggy bank. It's actually looking decent. And my prediction is, is that by May, the only cars that should be expensive in Yu-Gi-Oh should be, and they deserve to be this expensive, and the in TCG anyway, and until we get further changes that will mean that this sort of practice will be inexcusable. But anyways, the point being is that the cars that I expect to be expensive after May going forward are SP Little Knight, the Sinful Spoils Package, and everything in the Sinful Spoils Package. Um, Horus, do I see it getting a reprint? Poss maybe, but I doubt it. I doubt this is going to get a reprint in the rarity collection. I possibly see that in the Megatons, which we should get, as I've said, in, in uh, the summertime, if you've seen my booster box guide. But anyways, so the SP Little Knight, the Typhon, I expect that to be expensive, and uh, want and the Sinful Spoils package. And that's about it. Those are the three sort of cards I expect. Those are the three things I expect to be really expensive. Outside of everything else, I expect those all to tank and all to be relatively affordable. Again, this is really, for TCG standards, you've got to consider this is really good. I mean, it means that going forward when you're making a competitive deck, it should not be as expensive. And you've got to remember that in May, when summertime hits, SP Little Knight is definitely going to be reprinted in the Megatin, along with uh, the Horus package and along with whatever, tanking those prices as well, going them down to a cheap price. So by the end of the year, the end of this year, the whole meta scene is going to be affordable. And when we hit to 2025, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is going to be potentially saved. Every single card is going to be affordable because thrust will get another reprint again as you know in the megatins so overall Yu-Gi-Oh is sort of saved i would say but that doesn't mean we can't go further that doesn't mean that konami has done enough um as i said before Yu-Gi-Oh is still in a bad place and we can do better we can go further and indeed we should ask for more that's all I have to say about this matter. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.